Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 modding video. Today we're checking out a brand new batch of mods from the Fallout 4 Nexus modding scene. We've got some new weapons and armors and some fun little goodies to check out today. But before we begin, if you do like the work I do here on YouTube or the mods that I make over on the Nexus, consider checking me out over on Patreon. It's a great way to support the work that I do directly, but it is completely optional. Of course, just something to do if you're interested in doing it. Now then, let's talk about the mods we're checking out today, starting off with a brand new Institute weapon known as the Institute SMG by Mikolov. Codename the Pew 90. This is going to be a P90 inspired energy weapon made for the Institute. That's right, that's quite a combination of words there, but every single part of it is true. It's going to use a P90 animations, but it's going to be an energy weapon using energy cells and have a nice little compact energy weapon, specifically a laser weapon that has a high rate of fire, pretty low damage, but again, a very high rate of fire to back that up. So it actually is pretty dang powerful. With full upgrades, I was able to shred through enemies very, very easily with this weapon. Even enemies that typically aren't able to be taken down very easily by energy weapons like super mutants. Now this weapon of course comes with a bunch of different attachments over at the weapons workbench to customize this thing not only how it looks but also how it performs and since it is an energy weapon you get a little bit more options there like changing out the different projectiles and different effects on the beam itself. There are also custom animations like I said that's going to make this thing reload like a P90 offering a nice big battery pack that you slam in there which is really really cool. This weapon is integrated into the game so it'll start spawning out in the level list on synths and that will start happening after level 15. This weapon also, because it is made by Miklov, is going to be a NIF bash, meaning it uses vanilla meshes. And what that means for you is that since the textures are vanilla, it's going to take any retextures that you have. So if you're not using any retextures, this thing will be white and red. But if you are like me, then this thing is going to be black and red, or maybe all black or all chrome. It depends on which retexture you decide to download. In my case, what you're seeing on screen is going to be a dark retexture with black and red. And I have to say, it looks really nice on this weapon. It's actually what's featured on the mod page, funny enough. Now, if you've used Mikolov's weapon mods before, you pretty much know what you're getting into. This is going to be a redux of a pretty old version of this weapon that he already had, but now it's going to be updated with brand new models, a nice little facelift to make this thing on par with some of his newer releases. And altogether, I say this is a pretty dang cool release. The aesthetic for this thing fits Fallout 4 very, very well, and I think this is a nice new addition to the Institute sandbox. Since they only have one weapon in the base game, I think this is a nice little thing to throw in there to uh, add a little bit of variety into their leveled lists. As is the case with all of the mods featured in this video, if you want to try this thing out, it will be linked down in the description below. I highly recommend you go and check this one out. Now, the next mod we're checking out is going to be a brand new ballistic weapon mod, and it's going to be the Scorpio 61, also known as the VZ-61 machine pistol by Diacute. This is going to be a proper standalone adaptation of the Scorpion machine pistol. You may have recognized this thing. It's a tiny little machine pistol that is going to be very, very popular in video games and other media, but we didn't have too many options for it in Fallout 4. The earliest option for this weapon was going to be from Bones as an optional file that most people didn't even know existed, though it was lacking a little bit in terms of attachments and different options. Now, this particular Scorpion is going to actually be from Wars, which is the second place we got a Scorpion. And Wars is nice and all, but it is a very, very massive mod. So if you wanted the Scorpion, you had to get all of Wars. And some people may not be interested in that since it does make a lot of changes to your game. Now, if you just want the Scorpion from Wars, this is going to be your best option, though Diacute has made quite a few changes and additions to this. So it's not going to be the exact version from Wars. It's going to have the same models, the same animations, but it is also going to have some new attachments and new features that are coming just from Dia. Primarily, this thing is going to have a ton of different attachments over at the weapons workbench, most of which are going to change the aesthetic of the gun, but some of them will also change the functionality, including different stocks and drum magazines, some muzzle devices, and a lot of different scopes. Almost too many. There are also some visual changes like different coatings so you can change the way the metal looks, and there are even some caliber options. This thing normally comes in 32 thanks to munitions, but there's also a 22 version, which is an interesting choice. Now, there are two versions of this mod. There is the standard version, which uses munitions so if you are using munitions that's the one that you're going to be using and it's going to have this weapon chambered in 32 like it should be but it also has an option to rechamber it to 22 not really sure the point of that it is a lot less effective than 32 and 32 should be pretty common anyways but it is there if you have a lot of 22 to spare if you're using something like the 22 pack though you've probably already got that handled with something like the 22 machine pistol now then there is also an optional file to have this in a vanilla version so there is no munitions required for that if you choose to go that route it's going to be available in 38 and only 38. There will be no rechamber options, just 38 caliber all the way, which honestly 
might be a bit better. I'd prefer 32 all the way, but that's just me. I guess you don't have to put on the 22 version if you don't want to. Regardless though, there's a munition version and a non-munition version, so whoever's using this should have an option that they prefer. Additionally, this thing does of course come with custom animations. Since it is a scorpion, it's going to kind of need those. It has brand new animations that are made specifically for a scorpion, so they fit very, very nicely. And there are animations not only for the regular magazines, but for the drum mags as well, which is always a nice touch. Additionally, this thing is going to spawn out in the world. Surprisingly, it spawns pretty early. I guess it makes sense since it is using 32 and 22. It starts spawning on Minutemen, Raiders, Triggermen, and you can purchase it from vendors. And all of that will start happening after level 3. Altogether, we have a really nice little machine pistol. If you're a fan of the Scorpion, this is probably one of the better options we have out there available right now, at least in a standalone configuration. So it's one that I recommend checking out for sure. But now we need to check out something to change it up a little bit. Let's talk about one of the new armor mods that has released lately, which is going to be the Brotherhood of Steel Sharpshooter Armor, coming from Dominator V111. This is going to add a brand new full set of armor, including the under armor and all of the pieces of over armor, whether it's arms, chest pieces, legs, and even a brand new helmet with custom textures, custom models, all kinds of really fun stuff. It is going to have some niff bashing going on using the different pieces of vanilla armor like combat armor, as well as some of the new Creation Club content like some of the Enclave armor for the helmets. But it's also going to have custom textures that are specific to this set of armor. I believe this is actually set up as a unique armor. Sadly, this thing is not going to be added to the leveled lists. It's something you're going to have to go out and find. It's going to be a one-of-a-kind set of armor perfect for a hero character. The balancing of this armor set is supposed to be in between a set of medium and heavy combat armor, which is an interesting way to balance something. As opposed to being in between, say, metal and combat armor, it's actually specifically going to be in between medium and heavy combat armor stats. So it's going to function pretty much exactly like combat armor, but have a totally different aesthetic that again statistically is going to be a little bit better than medium combat armor and a little bit worse than heavy combat armor since this one is not upgradable it's not going to be something that you can actually have heavy or medium variants of it's going to come as is which is why it's probably one of a kind and also not added to the level lists additionally there is that new set of under armor which is going to have similar stats to a fully upgraded vault suit which is pretty interesting and there's also the new helmet which has similar stats to the marine helmet actually offering slightly higher stats so it's one of the better helmets in the game considering the marine helmet was added in the dlc now if you want to get this one-of-a-kind armor set you're going to have to go and find it spoiler warning for those who don't want to know this thing is going to be found over at the federal supply cache in 84 and e Altogether, a pretty nice set of armor with some really cool custom aesthetics. Definitely an interesting choice to use some of the Enclave pieces for a Brotherhood of Steel armor set, but there is a little bit of lore written on that as to why exactly this armor exists, so if you're interested in that, you can go check that out on the mod page. It's a little bit of a lengthy read, but it is interesting to see what the author thought about this armor set and why they chose to use those pieces. Lore-friendly armors are usually pretty hard to come by, so this is definitely a nice addition to your game, and who knows, maybe we'll see some patches in the future that will add this thing to the leveled list or maybe integrate it into the game in some other interesting way. Now, the next mod is a brand new release by Miss Valerie, known as the Wasteland Stick. That's right, we're checking out a stick mod. Except it's not really a stick, it's more of an axe handle, which is pretty interesting. In its base configuration, it actually is just an axe handle, a big chunk of wood with some different bolts and grips and different things attached to it. But the really cool thing about this weapon and why I liked it and chose it for this video is that it has a lot of customization options at the weapon's workbench that change the way the weapon functions and appears, which is always a really nice touch. You can customize this thing to be your perfect wasteland melee weapon. You can have a normal axe head on this just to have a really cool scrappy looking axe. You can also throw on a mace head with different bolts and screws or even barbed wire coming off of it. And there's even a makeshift axe head which has a knife blade attached as a sort of makeshift axe, which I think is really cool. And there's a lot of wires and stuff holding that together, which makes it look very fallouty, which is why I think it looks really cool and very lore friendly in game. It's a high quality model, very, very nice, and it has very good textures as well. You can tell that this thing is a pretty much triple A quality asset. So it does look a little bit out of place in Fallout 4, which is a funny thing to say. But typically when you see other weapons in the game, they're a little bit low quality. They're not as nice. This thing doesn't look very roughed up, and that's probably my only complaint about it, is that since it is a makeshift weapon, it looks awfully clean. The wood is nice, and the metal is nice. It's not too scratched up or dinged up, or at the very least, it's not rusted, which I would kind of expect from something like this. But all of that aside, I think it's a great, great model, a great weapon as well. This thing looks super cool, and it definitely fits that Fallout wastelandy, scrappy aesthetic. Now, one of the downsides with this mod, and this is just for me personally, is that there is no levelless integration. You know I like to see my stuff integrated into the world, and sadly, this one is not. Instead, you're going to have to go craft it over at the chemistry station, so it's going to be a craftable option. So at the very least, you can make more if you want to equip your settlers with it or maybe give it to a companion, but you are not going to be finding it out in the world, which is a shame because I'd really like to see this thing on raiders. 
No custom animations here, which is kind of to be expected with a melee mod. That's pretty rare when it comes to melee options, but altogether a nice little melee weapon. You can't really go wrong with a nice scrappy melee weapon, and this one is definitely a nice one that's worth checking out. And finally, that takes us to a brand new heavy weapon known as the Alice Grinder Minigun Redux, a port from Fallout New Vegas by the 6th Messenger. This is going to add a brand new minigun into the game with custom animations because it is going to rely on the Capital Wasteland minigun. So it actually makes use of the Capital Wasteland minigun animation set, which is pretty interesting. You don't typically see custom animations for a big heavy weapon like this, so having them is a pretty nice option. Also, despite being a heavy weapon, this thing surprisingly does have a good bit of options over at the weapons workbench. Different barrel attachments, different muzzles, even different receiver options. So that makes this thing already better than the vanilla minigun. This thing comes chambered in 308, so it is a heavy gun, and it still has a very, very fast fire rate. This is definitely intended to be a late game weapon. This thing shreds through enemies. In my testing, it took down pretty much anything you could encounter with ease, and you don't really have to worry about dying because this thing will back you up 100%. This thing also does have level list integration, so you will be able to find this thing out in the world in every place that you might find a normal minigun. That might be a little bit sketchy because this thing does use full auto 308, but you're going to have to have enough 308 rounds to back that up, I suppose. So that may be one of the balancing acts of this weapon. You're going to have to spend a whole lot of caps to get that much 308 to support the hungry, hungry nature of this weapon. Additionally, there's also a unique in this mod known as Sasha, which is going to fire shotgun shells, and that's just absurd. If you want to get your hands on that one, spoiler alert, you're going to find it over in Good Neighbor. It is sold by Clio, so it's a pretty hefty price to get one of these. As far as heavy weapons go, this one is pretty much perfect. It's a very, very nice model and texture. It has nice custom animations, levelless integration, a bunch of attachments, and a unique. That's a pretty good set to me. So if you're looking for a new minigun, maybe a replacer, maybe a standalone, this is definitely one that I would recommend. A very nice weapon by the Six Messenger. As always, this one is a pretty good little bang for your buck. So if you're a fan of heavy weapons, this is one I would definitely recommend checking out, as I would recommend every mod in this video. Again, they will all be linked down in the description below. If you want to check out any of them, they will all be right there. All right, guys, I think that pretty much wraps up everything in this week's video. If you enjoyed it, consider dropping it a like. It really helps out the channel and lets me know which kinds of videos you guys enjoy. And of course, if you want to support me directly, you can do so over on Patreon. It's linked down in the description, but of course, it is completely optional. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace!